أهلا بكم في لقاء خاص من لقاءات لوسيل نلتقي اليوم السيدة شيلي برونز ويك الرئيس التنفيذي بمؤسسة الفضاء الأمريكية لدى السيدة برونز ويك خبرة لأكثر من 20 عاما في مجال صناعة الفضاء عرفت بمبادراتها في مجال ابتكار تكنولوجيا الفضاء هي ضابطة بالقوات الجوية الأمريكية تم اختيارها كخبيرة لبرنامج الأمم المتحدة الفضاء من أجل النساء نستكشف معها اليوم اقتصاديات الفضاء والفرص المتاحة في هذا المجال Firstly, Ms. Shelley Brunswick, welcome here in Qatar. We would like to know what made you come here to Doha at the time. If you can shed light about your visit to Qatar. Shokran Jazilan. I'm so honored to be here in Qatar and be a guest of, your, of the country of Qatar as well as the U.S. Embassy to participate in the year of cultural exchange between the U.S. and Qatar. And I'm here to participate in AstroCon 21. Uh, Ms. Pornswick, uh, how do you see women in the space industry? You know that uh, you talk a lot about the participation of women in this industry. It's really important to look at bringing underrepresented groups into the space ecosystem. So when I talk about underrepresented groups, I'm looking at male and female, younger individuals, and globally. So it's really important to look at those three areas when we talk about the space ecosystem and inviting and welcoming more individuals to bring new ideas, new expertise into the space ecosystem to solve the challenges and the excitement about space exploration as well as space technology here on Earth. Three weeks ago, you said that the space technology made COVID-19 easier than 1980 pandemic. Absolutely. Well, first I want to say COVID-19 was not easy. It was challenging for the world and I sympathize with anyone who's had a loss of a loved one or has had challenges because of COVID-19. But there are three space technologies that made a difference with how we face COVID-19 and the pandemic of 1918. And that's telecommunications, telehealth, and teleconferencing. Those three technologies were all designed for the space era and transitioned into commercial use. And just think about how we were able to continue to communicate, work from home, children were able to school from home, you were able to talk to your doctor virtually. Because of space technology, we were able to lighten the burden of the pandemic. Interesting. Uh, Qatar discovered uh, like uh, 10 planet uh, since 2011. How do you see the effort from Qatar and its ability to explore the space industry. Excellent. Well, when we talk about the space industry, we at Space Fund call it, Space Foundation, we call it the space ecosystem. And what that means is going back to the moon and on to Mars and beyond, but then how does that come back to and benefit us here on Earth? And I see Qatar playing in many roles. One, space exploration. You already have a partnership with NASA mm -hmm. to do aquifer research. Uh, so that's one area where you're already partnering to do planetary research. But also I see Qatar utilizing space technology and, and transitioning space technology and creating jobs and entrepreneurship opportunities with space technology. And we call that tech transfer. Similar to what I just shared, that teleconferencing, telecommunications and telehealth we're all space technologies that outstanding entrepreneurs commercialize so we could all benefit. So let's talk about space economy. Uh, what are opportunity for country, especially in the region, we talk about Qatar. Uh, you know that Qatar has a lot of investment abroad. How do you see the opportunity in space economy? So let's define what is the space economy, first of all. So in 2020, the Space Foundation defined the space economy as $447 billion. And that economy is projected to grow to over $1 trillion by 2030 and over $3 trillion by 2040. So I see Qatar's role as deciding how Qatar wants to play. So the U.S. is 80% commercial now. So when you think of that $447 billion economy, it's products and services, entrepreneurship, jobs and innovation. So that's one route that Qatar or any country could follow. There are other opportunities though, where countries could decide they want to harness space technology, develop it, and then become entrepreneurs and provide it to the world as a benefit. And those technologies could be data analytics, healthcare, mm -hmm. manufacturing, virtual reality, robotics. So the sky is not the limit for Qatar. 
I see that you are interested in entrepreneur. Um, how does that entrepreneur benefit from a space economy? Well, at, at the U.S., mm -hmm. NASA has thousands of patents that are waiting to be commercialized. You have a program for entrepreneur. Yeah, for we do have a program. Mm -hmm. So our program at Space Foundation mm -hmm. is called our Space Commerce Entrepreneurship Program. Mm -hmm. And what it's designed to do is to help individuals, one, what is the space economy? So we help them understand what are the opportunities available. Then two, we have a program of webinars and workshops and courses that help them look at how they can become a space entrepreneur. And then that third part, which is where could they find an idea? Now they may already have an idea, like Uber or Airbnb or an app, that is all enabled by space technology. Or NASA and ESA, the European Space Agency, have thousands of patents that are waiting for entrepreneurs to commercialize. Qatar has an agreement with NASA. Qatari citizens could apply for any of those applications. So I share with you that entrepreneurship, we at the Space Foundation promote entrepreneurship, and we encourage Qatar to look at entrepreneurship as an opportunity for your citizens. But uh, some would argue that governments dominate the space industry. To what extent this will affect the private sector? Really up to the government to decide mm. how they want to engage the private sector. So mm. in the U.S., 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it was primarily government. We need to uh, make this space for a uh, private sector in this. Right, and, mm -hmm. and what, what the government did in the U.S. Mm -hmm. is they passed legislation that allowed for commercialization. So all the activities you're seeing today with SpaceX and Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic all came from legislation that was passed in 2004 that allowed for commercialization. And that commercialization, then the government gave money a little bit of seed money, and we call that a public-private partnership, to allow that commercial industry to develop and flourish. And now, we are all seeing the benefits of all those commercial space companies. So Qatar has the same opportunity to decide, is that what's best for Qatar to commercialize its industry for space exploration? Just remind me how much is the industry? In 2020, it was $447 billion. And since we are, we are talking about the partnership, how do you evaluate the partnership between NASA and Qatar Foundation. We know that uh, they are agreed to, to, to discover the buried water in Earth's deserts. How do you see this kind of partnership will benefit the Absolutely. The well, we, have, we yeah. have a saying that no one goes to space alone. Mm -hmm. And no one can solve all the challenges on Earth, too. And what we're looking at with this partnership with NASA and Qatar is aquifers and how, how fast they're replenished or how fast they're depleting the rising uh, water from the ice melt, will that um, contaminate the aquifers that are near the shoreline? So there's a lot of great opportunity from satellites that can observe that, uh, the aquifers and then provide that data. Because once you have data, then you can take action. So this is a great opportunity to partner and find ways to help solve challenges that all of us are facing on Earth. Among all this challenge, I mean, during COVID-19, uh, how do you assess the industry? We're now we witness China touches the moon and uh, U.S. astronaut return to International Space uh, Center. How do you see the, the industry among the COVID-19? During 2020, mm. it was a robust year for the space industry. We mm. were still hiring. We were still actively pursuing the space ecosystem. There were still jobs that were left unfilled in the space economy. Mm -hmm. And so you, you listed a few. So the US launched a US rocket built in the US on US soil. The Chinese went to the moon, but we also had three missions to Mars in 2020 from around the world, the US, uh, China, the UAE. So space is open for business mm -hmm. and it is gonna continue to be growing rapidly. So this is a great opportunity for Qatar to find their access point and be a leader in that space ecosystem and partner with NASA and ESA and other organizations around the world. Interesting, this led me to a very important question. Now we're witnessing an energy crisis over the globe, so how can um, countries uh, benefit from the space technology to in research and exploration for oil and gas here in Qatar and abroad. We now we are facing an investment uh, difficulty in this industry. Excellent. Well, there are companies mm -hmm. that do provide satellite data that can help you look for new exploration opportunities, mm -hmm. as well as watch uh, the current um, assets that you have and do the management to make sure that mm -hmm. they're running at full capacity. There's also other opportunities that are indirect 
to mm-hmm. that oil and gas industry, such as telecommunications, being able to communicate with industry partners that want to purchase your oil and gas. Mm-hmm. You have to have transportation, the tankers. Those are all running on GPS, mm-hmm. uh, global positioning system, space technology. The financial system that's transacting the payments for oil and gas is all run on space technology. So although there are direct opportunities from satellite uh, management of assets of oil and gas, mm-hmm. there's indirect opportunities all around to enhance the oil and gas sector. Some people would say that among all this race, some people would say that they are afraid the competition in the space industry will lead to an armed race between countries. As you said that over 85 plus countries operating in the space. Do you share the same fear with them? Well, I think there's two ways to look at competition. Mm-hmm. Is it competition between two countries like it was mm. with between the Soviets and the US? Or is it competition that's healthy competition and commercialization like SpaceX and Blue Origin mm. and Virgin Galactic? Because then we get new ideas, mm. new innovative opportunities. Mm. Because of the way SpaceX has created the reusable launch vehicle, mm. it has lowered the cost of launch and now created launch accessible to all. There are college students and high school students that can now launch Mm -hmm. canned satellites because of the lowered cost of launch because of SpaceX. So some competition in the global economy is good, Mm -hmm. Um, but the point I want to share with you is space is for all of us and it benefits all of us here on planet Earth. And so we all have to decide, every country, every citizen, every community, Mm -hmm. how do we want to work together to make it a benefit for all of us? Uh, my last question is, uh, let's talk about uh, tourists in the, in the space. We've, re- we've seen recently many uh, tourist trips uh, done by the businessmen and celebrity. How do you see the travel to space? What challenges and opportunity? There's a great opportunity mm. for the space ecosystem and, and mm. space tourism. Um, will it become the same as airline travel? There mm. are some more risks, obviously, to going to space than mm. getting on an airplane and traveling around the globe. But what the great opportunity this does is it excites our youth to pursue space careers. They're excited by Elon Musk and Richard Branson Mm -hmm. and Jeff Bezos. They're excited about the opportunities of space. Mm -hmm. So we want to promote that excitement to young kids around the world so they'll pursue the careers in the growing space ecosystem. Do you think it will be for public soon? For the public soon, Mm -hmm. no. It'll Mm -hmm. be a while because of the high cost. Mm But I think the opportunity to allow individuals to do that opportunity, as well as someday there will be a space hotel, right? So you'll be able to go up and the International Space Station will deorbit and there'll be a commercial space station put up and there'll be opportunities to go there. Absolutely. Um, I think we're probably looking at maybe 10 years or so. Ms. Forensweek, thank you for this opportunity for Los Angeles newspaper. أعزائي المشاهدين كانت هذه السيدة برونسويك الرئيسة التنفيذي لمؤسسة الفضاء الأمريكية طيب الله اوقاتكم